Hello. I had some interesting calculations, and I wanted to share it with you because I'm a nerd. And I thought it was just totally amazing that you could calculate or estimate the size of an atom and the distances between atoms. I'll say distances between atoms uh, based on uh, a simple knowledge of density and Avogadro's number. So, for example, if water has a density of one gram per milliliter, and it does, and I know that water is H2O, um, and I know the molar mass of water, I can take it, qu take it quite a ways. So here's one gram is one milliliter of water. And I know water is H2O, and one oxygen weighs 16, and one hydrogen weighs one apiece, uh, so 18 grams per mole. And one mole is uh, Avogadro's number of molecules. And oh, over here I went ahead and reminded myself that one cubic centimeter is one milliliter, and so since the volume is a derived unit based on length times length times length, I could kind of calculate the number of molecules of water that must be in one cubic meter of water. Or, since that's a little bit large, uh, oh, not yet. <laughs> Actually, so that's a number of molecules per volume. What if I had a, num a volume per molecule? And that is simply the reciprocal. So I take that large number of molecules per cubic meter and turn it upside down into cubic meters per molecule. Interesting. Um, yeah. Then I say, well, since volumes are length times width times height, my simplest approximation or assumption would be to say that, a, um, that maybe a water molecule is length times width times height. Maybe it's more spherical, or I could go four-thirds pi r cubed, the volume of a, the volume of a sphere. <coughs> Either one will work. You'll get a slightly different answer, but the simplest assumption would be to say, let's uh, go length times width times height, assuming those are all about the same, about the same for all for most practical purposes. Uh, at least two sig figs. The volume then would be mm, length times length times length, being about all about the same. Take the cube root of both sides, and you find the length of a water molecule to be about. 3 times 3.1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters, or about 3.1 angstroms. That's about 0 0.31 picometers. All right, whatever. So um, 3.1 angstroms for the size of one uh, water molecule. Uh, it says here data from other experiments, and not too hard to do actually, um, show the size of a water molecule to be about 2.75 angstroms. So this was based on 3.11 angstroms was based on the density of water, how many water molecules per uh, volume, and then take the reciprocal of that. This is based on the size of the molecule. So my my thought is the difference between 2.75 and 3.11 is uh, kind of the distance between each water molecule, which isn't very much, eh? What's that? 0.6 or so angstroms in between each water molecule. So this is a somewhat blurry cartoon, but imagine the water molecules packed very, very closely. In contrast, how would the water molecules in a sample of gaseous water, water vapor, be um, spaced? And so we could do a similar, similar calculation with that. Interesting, isn't it, that liquid water and solid water, the particles are very similarly spaced, but in the gaseous uh, sample, we imagine the cartoon being very, very much more spread apart and actually these distances here are way too close. So let's do that calculation as well. Uh, let's say the um, density of water vapor is about 0.736 grams per liter, not grams per milliliter. And then we take that and run with it in a very similar calculation to what we just did above, where I take the grams per liter and change them into grams, uh, grams per, gra I change them into moles per liter, a mole of um, particles, 6.022, 10 to the 3rd, and take the mm, liter and change it into cubic meters. That gives me the molecules per cubic meter in the sample molecules of water vapor. Molecules of water in a vaporous sample. And uh, then I also, of course, uh, take the reciprocal of that, just like I did above, to give me a cubic meters per molecule cubic meters available per molecule. Then, um, what did I do next? Oh.
you know, I just brought that down and then assumed also that, um, just like I did above, that the length and length and length of, a, of that volume uh, are approximately the same if it's a, a cubic region and take the cube root of both sides to find 34 angstroms ish available for one water molecule. So how does 34 angstroms compare to the size of the water molecule? Remember the size of the water molecule is 2.75 angstroms. Here's a summary of that. So with the liquid I found um, them to be very closely packed distances the distance between molecules I found that from my density of water and Avogadro's number basically and for a gas similarly it's 34 angstroms so more than 10 times more space in between the molecules interesting so why don't I do it here's a cartoon video of um, animation of what liquid water looks like isn't that boring interesting funny and putting water molecules so close to each other um, allows a lot of interparticle forces, specifically hydrogen bonding type of inter intermolecular force. And so they're, they're interacting quite a bit. Leads to water having all different kinds of weird properties. Uh, let's watch this one. This is the similar cartoon made by the same company for gaseous water. Like I said, they're at least 10 times further apart. So I like to say that uh, water vapor or any gas actually is at least 10 times more spread out than the, uh, uh, the sem same sample of, uh, of liquid. Liquids and solids are, liquids are and solids are both almost incompressible and so I can't squeeze them to a smaller space, uh, meaning there's almost nothing in between uh, the molecules or particles of a solid or liquid. Thanks for watching, guys. Are you interested? Curious? <laughs> nah, I don't know.